So in today's video, I want to give you a few tips and some guidance as far as editing your Astro photos using the Pro Panel. So here we have a raw Milky Way photo with very minimal processing just in Lightroom that I brought into Photoshop. So I want to show you some techniques that you can use on your Milky Way photos. All right, so first thing I want to do is remove some of this light pollution that's in the photo. So I'm going to go over here to the panel and then under the effects section, under astrophotography, I'm just going to click this reduce light pollution. And then you just need to select your brush, so hit B on the keyboard, and then D is for the default colors. And we need to paint with white on this black layer mask. So I'm going to keep my opacity somewhere about 50 and the flow is good at 20 and I just want to be able to subtly add this effect onto the photo just by dabbing on it. So I'm just going to paint one click at a time. Just kind of around this horizon area and you can see that it's just removing that yellow tint. So the beauty about doing it this way is we can, you know, really isolate the light pollution and not remove any of the warm tones from the core. And once we're happy with the effect, we can go back to the panel, hold down shift, hover over merge, and we can flatten the image. Next up, I want to address this color cast and make sure your properties tab is open when you select reduce cast and you're going to get this little eyedropper. So select somewhere in the sky that's black and click and you can see that that just corrected the color cast in the photo. And then it's up to you. You can either stamp up as you go or you can flatten. I like to stamp up usually so I'll just click stamp up to merge visible. And next up I want to apply something that's really cool and this is the reduce stars filter. So if I reply reduce stars it's actually going to run some actions in the background and reduce some of the brightest stars. And if I turn that off and on, you can see the effect there. So I actually like to run this twice. And one thing to note is you need to run that on the actual layer and not like an adjustment layer. So you need to stamp visible before you actually run the reduced stars layer. So I'm going to run. So I'm going to run this one more time. And I really like that effect there. So let me group these two together. So just hold down shift, select both your layers and click group. And now we have this grouped. And if I zoom in and I turn this off and on, you can see we get this really cool effect which really helps to isolate this Milky Way galaxy by removing some of the brighter stars. All right, I'm going to stamp visible one more time, and now I'm going to run an action called Core Contrast. So I'm going to hold down Shift and hover over Enhance Milky Way, and I'll get Core Contrast here. This is another action that you want to do stamp visible on your layers before you run it. And this box will pop up. These are the predetermined settings here that I have selected, and you can change these if you want. And now if I turn this off and on, you can see we get a nice little bit of punch to the photo. Another way to add contrast to adjust the core is to use the structure filter. So let's go over here to filters, and we're going to also need to stamp visible really quickly. And then we'll run the structure action. So let's say that we only want to apply this to just the Milky Way or the core. So what we can do is go over here to the tools and then find a luminosity mask that's going to match up with the stars. So let's go with luminosity one. And let's just click refine. And we can just bring the levels over here just a touch. We can bring the whites up. And you can see that we're only affecting the stars with this mask or the galaxy in this case, whatever is going to show up white will be revealed and whatever is going to show up black is going to be concealed from our layer. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click apply mask. So now I've essentially masked out everything except for what was shown in our mask preview and that structure filter is only going to be applied to the stars. So let's say that we want to make some more adjustments to just the core. We can actually make that same luminosity mask again and we can refine it slightly. And then click OK. And the cool thing about these luminosity mask previews is we can refine them even further using our brush or the gradient tool or anything that we can paint with essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my brush. I'm going to change to black. So I'm going to hit D for default, X to toggle between black and white. And I'm going to change the blend mode on this to overlay. And keep in mind we're still on the luminosity mask preview here. So I can start to dab in the photo and remove what I want included in my layer mask by painting black. So 
So the cool thing about the overlay blend mode when painting on a layer mask, or in this case, a layer mask preview, is that the black doesn't affect the white as much and the white doesn't affect the black. So now when I change the white and I start painting in the core, you can see it's not affecting the surrounding sky as much and it's really kind of targeting just that core area of the Milky Way. And you can toggle back and forth and kind of refine it even further if you want. All right, so once we're happy with our luminosity mask preview, all we need to do is open the panel back up and then we can apply it as a mask. In this case, I'm gonna apply it as a group in a mask. So the reason I like to do a group in a mask is because now whatever type of adjustment that I put inside the group is only going to affect the area shown in white with my luminosity mask preview. So now, for example, if I wanted to add a curves layer, now this curves layer is only going to affect the areas through the luminosity mask that we just created. So for example, if I just brighten this up just a touch, you can see it's only affecting the core of the Milky Way that we targeted using our luminosity mask. And the same thing applies for the color. So if I go over here to effects and then I grab a color balance layer, now the color is going to be affected just in the stars where we targeted using that layer mask. So let's say I added a vibrance layer. I could ramp up the vibrance and then I'm only going to affect the core in the middle. So I'm just gonna select the group and then I'm gonna stamp visible. And I actually want to add a Lux filter really quickly, and that's another way to add some contrast. And if I turn that off and on, you can see we added a nice little bit of punch to the image. So let's run the Dark and Highlights filter, and this is really nice to bring back some of the details in your highlights. So in this case, we see that we affected just the highlights in the image, and it made the color a little bit richer. So the color still looks a little bit off, so I'm going to try Auto Color on this. And you can see that that did a really nice job of just cooling the image off and kind of color correcting it. So I'm gonna stamp visible one more time and then run the noise reduction filter. And that just brings up this little box here which we can zoom in a little further if we even want to. And you can see that this shows the preview. So if I turn that off, it'll show with the noise and then with the noise reduction apply with the preview on. So these are the default settings that I leave it at. Usually you can adjust this if you want, but I'm gonna click okay. Next, I'm gonna run the Sharpen Stars filter. So, so the cool thing about this filter is that it only sharpens the stars. So if I actually turn that preview off and on, you can see it really has a nice drastic effect just on the stars, so I'm gonna click okay. And I usually zoom in because sometimes this can cause halos around the stars. So I'm just zooming in and making sure that that didn't cause any halos around the stars. And I think that looks good. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with this Milky Way image. You could also do some cool things to it, like add star glow. So let me actually just show you really quickly. So if we want to add some star glow to this photo, we just click the star glow filter. And then we're just going to grab our brush, so B on the keyboard. And we're going to make our brush really small. As small or smaller than the star. And we're going to hit D on the keyboard for our default colors. X to go between black and white. And we're going to paint with white on the mask. So I'm actually going to paint at 20% opacity and 20% flow. And you want to make sure that you're actually on normal blend mode for your brush. And then just start small and then click as you're expanding. And I usually only do this to some of the bigger stars. So for example, I'll just kind of move around the image And add some nice star glow. And again, we're just clicking as we're expanding. So you would use white if you want your default star glow. If you wanted to actually paint star glow with a color, then you would just create a new one. And then double click on the actual color box here. And then just sample the star that you want to paint. So in this case, I just sampled this orange star. So I'll click OK, reselect the layer mask. And again, I'm painting with a white brush on the black layer mask. And that's going to paint in that color layer in the correct blend mode to create our star glow. So if I zoom out, you can see the effect a little bit more. And I probably could have painted those a little bit bigger as well. And then you could adjust the opacity as that as well to either strengthen or minimize the effect. 
And I'm only going to show you it on a few of these stars for this example, but you could paint those on as many stars or as little stars as you wanted to. All right, so if I go back up in the top of the history and I select where we opened from, this was our original raw image, and we created this nice, clean, sharp, noise-free Milky Way image with just a few clicks and the Pro Panel. So these were just a few tips for editing your star shots using the Pro Panel. If you want to learn how to photograph the stars, I've actually just released an online astrophotography course, and I'll put the link in the description below. If you have any questions at all about editing your star shots with the Pro Panel, leave them in a comment and I'll get back to you.